And welcome back to the fourth example problem and the most punishing of all of our examples because we're going to put a lot of things together on this particular example. We have a piece of material 0 0.05 inches thick with a bed radius of 0.15. It's got a 1 inch flat, 135 degree bend, okay, more than 90 degrees, so it's 135 degree bend, 1 and a quarter and then a 90 degree bend. So we're going to put all kinds of the pieces from our formulas together to get this. And the most important thing I need you to watch out for on this is we're going to have a setback for 135 and a setback for 90. A bend allowance for 135 and a bend allowance for 90. And so we're going to have a pretty complicated little piece of work by the time we're done. So let's go ahead and begin. I'm going to write up here what all the pieces we need to calculate. We need a setback 90 and we need a setback 135. We need a bend allowance 90, and we need a bend allowance 135. Now our flat across here would just be 1 inch, and then 1.25 inches, and then one more inch, giving me a total of 3.25 inches. But when we transfer this, once again, this is our not-to-scale generic representation. It's going to be a little shorter and we need two bend tangent lines for each of these bends. This is going to be our bend allowance between the 1 and 1.25, this is going to be the bend allowance 90. And this is going to be the bend allowance 135 for that bend. This is going to be 1 minus the setback of this angle, and this is going to be, okay, so that's 1 minus setback 135. And this one is going to be 1.25 minus the setback 135 and minus the setback 90. This one's just been the law, it's 90, like we said. This is 1 minus the setback. 90. And now we can see how we're going to lay all of these pieces out. We just need to calculate each of these numbers. Let's start with the setback. Okay, setback 90, we can use this formula for, and our setback 90 is equal to our material thickness plus our bend radius, which is equal to 0 0.05 plus 0 0.15, which is equal to 0 0.20. Setback 90, 0 0.20. Setback 135, you notice this formula is the same, except we have a K in it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and erase it, but for those of you who've already figured this out, all you have to do is multiply setback 90 by K for 135. Here we are, set back 135 equals tangent of 135 over 2 times material thickness plus bend radius. Let's calculate what the K is for our people who don't like the tangent button on their calculator. And we get um, 135 over 2 is 67.5. So Tangent of 67.5 gives me a k value of, of 2.414. So setback 30, 135, let me get out of the way so you guys can see what I'm writing, equals 2.414 times material thickness plus bend radius, but that value was 0.20. So setback 135 equals 2.414 times 0 0.20, which should be, according to my handy dandy calculator, 0 0.2 times 2.414 gives me 0.482. Okay, that's a pretty big setback. Setback 135 equals 0 0.482. 0 
0.482. That's more than twice the setback of this one, but when you look at this, that's realistic because that juts so far out, it gets trimmed off. Okay, so we have our first numbers. We need our bend allowance numbers. Now, I'm going to show you the way that I like to calculate these when I've got multiple pieces, and that is I use this formula instead of that formula. And I calculate this part and multiply it once by 90 and once by 135. That just makes the math come out a little easier, but you can calculate it any way that you like. Now, learning from my past experience, we're going to begin down here where I can put it all on one line. Bend allowance equals 0 0.0078 times my material thickness, which is 0 0.05. Plus 0 0.0143 times my bend radius, which is 0.15, and then I'm going to hit times the number of degrees. Okay, this is one term. This is the next term, and all of that goes together. So let's simplify out our terms. 0 0.0078 times 0 0.05, which gives me, for my first one, remember these are little bitty fellas, this is 0 0.00039, 0 0.00039, 0 .00039, that's this term right here, plus my next term is 0 0.0143 times 0.15, gives me a total of 0 .00215, 0 .00215 times the number of degrees. And that was, once again, my bend allowance. Now let's put these together. 0 .00215 plus 0 .00039 equals 0 0.00254. Bend allowance equals 0 0.00254 times degrees. So bend allowance 90 equals 0 0.00254 times 90, and bend allowance 135 equals 0 0.00254. Oops times 135. So let's go ahead and put those in. Okay, times 90, and I get my first bend allowance. My bend allowance 90 is 0 0.228. And I'm going to go ahead and put that up here. My bend allowance 90 is 0 0.228. And my bend allowance 135 is 0 0.00. 254 times 135 for a total of 0.343. Over here, 0.343. Now I have all the numbers that I need to write my formulas down over here. So let's get rid of this stuff. Sorry guys, it's gone. And I have to substitute all these numbers in. And this is where she gets crazy. We have, for this first flat, flat A equals 1 minus setback 135. That's 0.518. Okay, it got trimmed quite a bit. Okay, my bend allowance 135. equals 0.343, that's this piece right across here, my flat B equals 1.25 minus, now this is where she gets crazy again, I'm going to write this down over here as a formula, 1.25 minus setback 135, which is 0.48 2 minus setback 90, which was 0.2, which is equal to 1.25 
minus 0.482 minus 0 0.20 gives me 0.568. So flat V is 0.568. Then we have bend allowance 90, which is equal to 0.228. And finally, we have flat C, and flat C is 1 minus setback of 90, 1 minus 0.2, that is 0 0.800. 0. Now, adding all of those together, my handy dandy calculator, point. 518. I say my handy dandy calculator, but I'm lying to you. This belongs to Muhammad, who's kindly operating the uh, camera for us. 0. 0.568 plus 0. 0.228 plus 0. 0.800 equals. Drum roll! 2.457. Okay? 2.457. Is that realistic? Yeah, that's pretty realistic because we cut some pretty big corners up here. Okay, it's significantly less than that, but she appears to be quite realistic. We can do the math again. Our total distance that we're going to cover is 2.457, and we can lay out our lines and make our Sight lines come out. Now, like we did last time, I'm going to go ahead and do a pseudo example across here where we're not going to measure everything out perfectly, but we're going to show you what it would look like. And uh, this time, let's actually draw it to scale. The way I'm going to draw it to scale is I'm going to do a three to one relationship on this ruler, and that'll make it uh, come out appropriate. So, three times of two and a half is that should be two and a half is five, seven and a half. Okay, so our width across here is going to come out about here for our entire piece. Right about that wide. And this would keep on going however long our profile needs to be. Again, most of these profiles are pretty long. Our first one, 0.518, is going to come out right about here. 0.518 comes out right about here, and this is our first bend tangent line. All right. Bend tangent line comes out to here. This is flat A, and this is bend allowance 135, which is 0.343 times 3 is just over 1, just about here, just over 1, comes out right about there, and this is our Sorry about the bad line, BA135. Now we've got our um, 1 and a half and 3 sixteenths right here. For our flat C, 1 and a half and 3 sixteenths comes out to our next bend tangent line. And our next bend tangent line, again, you would measure on both sides. Not just one, because you've got to actually make it come out. I just have to make it look pretty. Okay, flat B. And now, 0.228 times 3 is going to be about 3 quarters. is going to come out right about here for our next marking. And our next one should come out right over here. This was our BA90. And at the bottom, I have 0.8. That should come to 2.4 inches. And if you look right here, it sure comes awfully close. I got 2 and 3 eighths inch. Let's make that a better cut across the bottom right here. And here we are with a scale representative of what she should look like. Now, one of the things we need to do across here now is we need to add our sight lines. When we go to add our sight lines in, our sight line is the bend radius exactly. So we're going to move one bend radius away, and our one bend radius away puts us right about here for the first one, less than halfway across. We pulled this direction, 
Now, so far we've always pulled from the top one, so let's measure this one from the bottom line. Okay, one bend allow, I'm sorry, one bend radius away comes to right here. One bend radius away. And so this one we would stick backwards into the brake to bend the first one, and then we'd stick forward into the brake to bend the second one. And there are our sight lines. So we can stick this sucker up into the brake, and we can bend ourselves this nice little channel that looks something like this. And this channel would just extend back however far we need it to be bent down the length of the airplane. And maybe it's a, a floor stiffener or something like that. But uh, there are our four examples, and I hope this helps you understand how the numbers work a little bit better. Once again, practice, practice, practice. Developing flats is something that takes a lot of time and a lot of practice if you're going to do it smoothly and well.